Welcome back to Bible study to uh, Paul's letter to the Philippian church in chapter 2, still in chapter 2, and welcome back to John Campbell and to Derek Walker. Thank you. Really good to see you both. And I think, John, you're going to read, we're going to backtrack a little uh, to verse 5 of chapter 2, reading through to verse 16. That's right. Thank you. So, Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Thank you. Okay, I'll pray. Let's pray. Lord, we uh, come again to these words, uh, to some of us very familiar and yet uh, as powerful as when they were first written. We thank you that your word is alive and relevant to us uh, today, in the 21st century. And Lord, we ask that we will hear from you. You, you will highlight um, new thoughts, new insights, and that you will speak to our hearts and that it will change us and that we will be uh, a better, more powerful uh, witnesses for you in these days. Amen. 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 Okay, well, we chatted beforehand, John, uh, 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 about the need sometimes just to take a step back. Yes. And, and even though we're right in the thick of chapter two, it's quite good just to have another look at, yes. at, at Philippians as a whole. Yes. Um, and bring in things that we didn't bring in right at the beginning. Yes, I think that's so. I mean, you know, the, the very nature of Bible study is that we get down to the nitty gritty. We look at the, at the nuance and, and, and the meaning of words and phrases and how they impact our lives and how they interconnect. And that's very important. Mm -hmm. but, but sometimes it's necessary just to step back and get a feel for what this whole letter is about. And uh, it's a love letter. It's often referred to as the, the love epistle. And, and, but, you know, <laughs> nothing is by chance. Paul, the master communicator, who, who, who's you know, pouring out these great themes, and we'll look at it verse by verse, but there are four great themes in here. And it's a fourfold presentation of Christ in, re in relation to the believer. And this is very important. And there are key verses. And I'd just like to talk about those just briefly. In chapter 1, um, the key verse is verse 21, mm. which is, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm. And what this is telling us, he's telling, and he unfolds that. You, if you go back into the chapter and reread it with that in mind, you'll see that that's what he's talking about. And, and, and so chapter one is about your life is Christ. Not just your life is in Christ, but your life is Christ. And you know, that's a huge statement to make. Mm. 
Mm. And then to move on to chapter two, the one we're in at the moment, the, the key verse is the one that uh, I, I started the reading with. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And again, as you look at that chapter, you find that is the thought that he's, he's dealing with and uh, expounding so that we can understand it. And uh, some translations say um, it's not so much mind as attitude. And I think that's right. But, but having thought about it a bit, it's probably both because mm. scripture is so deep we don't want to limit it. I think at its zenith we should have the mind of Christ. At, it, at a slightly lesser level we need to have his attitudes, mm. if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what this whole verse is about. And this is what he's saying, you know, Christ is in you, his life is your life. Yeah. You have his mind. And, and, and in, in chapter 3 the, the key verse is verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And in that chapter, Paul is striving to explain to us the, 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 the vitalness of knowing Christ on a personal and very, very intimate basis. Mm -hmm. So that he, you, you walk one-on-one -on -one with him. He, he is your everything. It's in, it's in him that you live and move and have your being. Mm -hmm. And that he, he's, he's not controlling you like a puppet master, but he's, he's leading you and guiding you in, in, the, in the way of righteousness, that you will walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And, and then in chapter 4, the key verse is verse 13, mm. um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, when we get there, I think we'll have a bit of fun with that verse. Yes. But yeah. what it's essentially saying is Christ is your strength. Mm. So, so your, you, Christ is your life. Yep. Christ is your mind. You, you, Christ wants to know you so intimately as a husband wants to know his wife. Mm. And, and, and he will give you all the strength you need. Wonderful, wonderful, Amen. wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh, maybe we should do this every Bible study, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give you the floor. So thank you very much. And we, we'll remember those four and we, we'll obviously refer back yes. to them as well. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, of course, we did a full treatise, as it were, of this, this amazing statement of, of Christ's, as it were, humbling, humiliating, you know, coming down. Um, and, and then there's the therefore in verse in verse 12. Should we start there or? Yeah, I mean, whenever there's a therefore, um, we want to see what, what it's yeah. there for, don't yes. we? Yeah. And um, it's uh, interesting that the following verse, verse 12, talks about working out your mm. own salvation. Yeah. So it connects to the previous passage mm. and it, it really made me think that now he's talking about salvation that we possess. Mm. And so we need to, to read that passage, the famous passage yeah. of Christ's humbling himself um, from a personal point of view. You know, it's one thing to read about a biography of a saint who did great things and laid down his life for the Lord. But it's another thing to, lead, to read a love story about somebody yeah. or, or to, to experience somebody loving us and yeah. sacrificing themselves for us. Yeah because that's the personal aspect makes it transformative. Yeah. And, so, and, so and, and it's basically, it's not just, I'm preempting mm. probably what you're going to say, but it's not just um, describing yeah. you know, what the Lord did, it's actually making a statement about our salvation. Exactly, because it's, you know, I must admit, when I read it, I read it as kind of objective thing of look how Christ so, you know, humbled himself so much, you know, mm that he's a wonderful example. Mm. But actually, we need to read it also, particularly from the point of view of, this is what he did for my salvation. He is the divine lover mm. who determined to save us and came from heaven to earth. He overcome every possible obstacle, you know. He had this loving servant heart that put me first before mm. myself. And then he even died on a cross. Yes. In the biblical thinking, to die on a cross is particularly significant. In Deuteronomy it says, cursed is he who hangs on a tree. Mm. In other words, him dying on a cross means he took my sin, he took my curse. He, d yeah. he did all of this yeah. humiliation, this self-humbling yeah. for me, yeah. to save me, to take my sin. So again, it's not, it's not just Jesus was a wonderful ethical teacher, what a wonderful example yeah. for us. It's, you know, he led this humble life, you know, as it were. It, it, 
is much more and kind of you know transcendent your, than do that. Do your best to imitate yes, it, kind of thing. Which is um, which is a kind of it's not a Christian. No, you know it is a Christian thing. Called Paul says, "Imitate me," um, but but equally, it's not going to save anyone. No, imitating no. A, a, you know a format, a format or a blueprint. Yeah, exactly. And and it's 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 and not an outward imitation can't do anything. Yeah, it's but in the sense of if we have the inward life of Christ, then we can live that out. Yeah, and we can have role models in that. Mm that we might imitate, but the essence of it is the life of Christ within us mm. that we seek to express. Mm. Uh, otherwise, it's a kind of self-salvation yeah. and self-sanctification. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so then when it talks about that God therefore highly exalted him and gave him the name above every name and that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, yeah. hidden in that is, yes, and, my, and, our, and those of us who believe in Christ we, we, we see him, not just as crucified, but as exalted. Mm. And our knee bows, and at the moment of salvation, when yeah. Christ is revealed to us, we bow our knee, we receive him as our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And, and now we are saved. That's now the point, isn't it, about, more, about kneeling? It, it is acknowledging his lordship. Yeah. Yes. And the classic Christian confession is Jesus is Lord. That's him. You know, so that... That it, yeah. that, that's One of the key, key verses for me is, if you confess with your mouth, yes. Jesus is Lord. Yes. Yes. Believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's right. So yeah. we have to know, we, we might believe in Jesus, but we, we have to know him as, as he is. Yeah. And he is God. Mm. And being God means he has absolute authority. He, mm. he mm. is Lord. And mm. the believing heart acknowledges that yeah. and, and submits to that. Yeah. And um, we may not be perfect in our obedience, but we have a, somewhere yeah. in our heart, <laughs> there is this submission to Christ as Lord. We acknowledge yeah. that Jesus is our Lord. Mm. And um, so th at this point, you see, this is the linkage, because now we possess salvation in us, in the sense that God has actually done, a, he, although salvation is a process, because we are spirit, soul, and body, he has begun that work, and he's done the main part in a sense, because our spirit, which in a sense is the core of our being, yeah. is has been saved, and you know the Holy Spirit actually comes and lives inside us, yeah. which is awesome, and we now become a temple of the living God, and he he says now now we need to work out our yeah. salvation, and it it kind of carry, mean, has the meaning your salvation has begun in you now. But now you need to bring that the, the salvation to its fullness. So can I link it to what you were saying at the beginning, John, the, those four elements? It does fit, doesn't it? Oh, it fits absolutely, which is exactly what you'd expect. And, 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 and um, you know, Christ in us, as, we begin, as Derek says, we need to now learn, and it's a lifetime's process, mm. we need to learn to let Christ in us out mm. um, and which and so we need to learn first what does the word say about what is a Christian how should a Christian walk and and we need to obey that because obedience is if, if you're saved you, you're required to obey God and a lot of the problems that we have are because of lack of obedience I mean it's as simple as that mm. you, you look in in Deuteronomy and you'll say it was a lack of obedience that caused all these things so we need to learn to be obedient and you can't obey if you don't study the scriptures mm. so that's at the first level. The scriptures, uh, um, I'm not contain the scriptures at the first level, but obedience, knowing what the scriptures say, that's the first level. That's something you can do immediately. And as you do that and study the scriptures, you, you, you will be changed inside. Remember this word is supernatural. Uh, it, right. It's alive and active yeah. and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now we just have to take that on faith, yeah. But it is, and you know, plenty of testimonies of people say how words have literally jumped off the page at them, and they mean that, or been highlighted, or started flashing, or whatever. Well, you pick up Shakespeare, that's never going to happen. No. So this is a supernatural word, yeah. and it will work in you, mm. and, and it will cause Christ to, to shine through you. Now, 
what does that mean? It means much more than somebody looking and seeing something in you which is over and above you as a person. It, it means Christ will begin to work through you his plan for his plan for the world, his plan so, for all those that you meet. So I, I like the fact that, you know, we started with have this mind, have this attitude, because yeah. it is an internal thing, isn't it? It is. It's actually, and, and reading, the, you know, who being the very nature God, you know, didn't count a quality of God, yeah. that's a mind thing. Yeah. It's an attitude thing that the Lord Jesus had. Yes. It isn't an outward um, list of things to do. But, um, it's an, yeah. It's, yes, it starts with the inward attitude. Yeah. 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 That uh, uh, having a servant heart, but that of course will be expressed mm. in how we live, yeah. uh, and uh, that's that's really the obedience yeah. to to express. You know, God's put His love in our heart by the Holy Spirit, but now we have to express yeah. that. Yeah. But we can't claim the credit for it because it, the source of that love is God yeah. in us, yeah. and and it's interesting. He says, "Therefore, my beloved, mm. notice that." These are ones who have received the love of God. They are mm. the beloved. Mm. So they've received the love of God and through the gospel, and that's transformed them. Yeah. And now they, and then he commends them yeah. as you've always obeyed. So yeah. he says, it's, it's I'm not the point John was making. I'm not telling obedience. you that you've never done anything mm. good. You know mm. what I mean? But I'm calling you up higher. Yeah. You, know, you have obeyed. You have expressed that love and humility and servanthood of Christ in your life. Yeah. You have done that, but now. I want you to, yeah. to take it up a level, you know, don't be satisfied with where you are. Yeah. And, and he and says... With fear and trembling. Uh, well, he says, first of all, mm. uh, not as in my presence only, but yeah. much more in my yeah. absence. You yeah. see, when we start, when we're immature, and we start to do the right things, but mostly when other people are looking. Behind the scenes, we, we, we might behave differently, but exactly. when the exactly. when the cameras are on That's us, it. you know, then, yeah. then, and and so with the apostle Paul around, they were all, you know, on their best uh, behavior. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Or somebody who's trying to impress a woman, you know. Yeah, That's it, exactly. He's 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 at his best, yeah. you know, but behind the scenes, he's yeah. something else. Shouting his head off. And, and so yeah. that's that's just immaturity. Yeah. And so Paul is saying, I want you to be. So that this is so much your lifestyle that yep. you are have an obedient lifestyle, a loving lifestyle, a servant lifestyle, that whether I'm here with you or not, yeah, you're living the same way. That that's maturity. Yep. And Paul does use, he does often contrast two things, doesn't he? He mm. gives you, you know, in my presence, in my absence. Yes. He he, he does, and it. It's a it, he, it's a great way of communicating something, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's not just you know, great what you're doing, carry on. Yes. It's, it's, right. he gives a bit more, there's a bit more depth. It's more colourful, yes. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. I, um, I'd just like to make the mm. point because I, I know that this verse can be quite frightening to some people. You know, what Derek has said will be very helpful, I'm sure. Mm. But I know that the verse can be frightening um, because it rather suggests that, it, as we just read it off the page, that it's performance related in some way. Yeah. And, and people might be fearful that if they don't work this out properly, that they're going to lose their salvation. And we need to put that to bed immediately. So salvation is there, work it so, out. That's right. They are saved. There is no doubt. The working out is actually a part of the sanctification process as you begin to, to release the salvation in you and understand it. And, and, and more than anything, understand what has gone before in the verses earlier, what Christ has done for you. Mm -hmm. As you begin to meditate on that, not only as Lord, but what this Lord did for you that he could claim you out of the pit of hell. And, and, and that there's no question that you are not saved. Yeah. But now you're moving into a higher level and a fullness mm. of walking out that and, and learning to live with Christ in, in an intimate way. Yeah. And, and basically, having this mind, having this attitude, um, knowing his love, not being indifferent. Because you know, if you're yeah. indifferent to this, yeah. indifferent to what the Lord did, you're not saved. No, no, you're not. There's an interesting difference between justification and sanctification. Those are two different things. Yeah. Justification is by grace, no works. Yeah. It's in entirely God's work. Yeah. And sanctification is also God's work mm. in, in that sanctification just couldn't happen if God exactly. did not initiate yeah. 
and, and, and initiate the process. But sanctification also requires our cooperation, yeah. our active cooperation. Yeah. That, that as we, as we work, you know, God is working in us, yeah. but we, we, we have to work it out. Yeah. And, and, but it is not working for our salvation. That's a done deal. Yeah, yeah absolutely you know, right. God, so so God picking up on John's point about people being anxious, it says, work it out with fear and trembling. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's awe and wonder. It seems almost counterintuitive to yeah. what you were just saying. Yeah, but it's awe and wonder is another way of looking at yes. it. In fact, you know, I'm not trying to replace the words, but it, it, it's, not a, it, it's the fear of the Lord. It's not a, not a terror. Yeah. It, it's just, yeah, it's, you know, yes. words so, can't describe it really. But, um, is there a difference between the two words, fear and trembling? Yeah, uh, the, the, I think so. But as you say, it's all caught up in yeah. what John was saying. But I would, you're talking about couplets, and I think yeah. there's a lot of couplets in this passage. Yeah, and are. I relate it to the, the couplets in the next verse too, that God is working in us to will and to do yeah. for his good pleasure. Yeah. So there are two aspects in, in the process. And um, the way my mind works, I always kind of like to see what, how the process Break works, down, you know. Yeah. But there's two aspects. First of all, God, how does God work in our sanctification? God works to, into our will mm. because he needs our intelligent cooperation. He's mm. not going to bypass mm. us. So he, he actually works in us to desire to do yeah. his will. Not just, just to be willing, okay, God, yeah. your will be done. But actually, that he, he works in us a desire so that we yeah. delight to do his will. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's the idea. I mean, when I read it, just again, face value, to will, it's God willing. But you're putting an interesting term, God which is, is God willing will for us to will. In us. You see, yeah, he's delight working his will in us. In the that's Lord, nice. and he will give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. He works that's in. Nice. But that requires our cooperation because that fits with the fear. The fear. Now, the. See, there is two aspects. There's submission and obedience. There's a, um, a psalm that says, I delight to do thy will, O Lord. Yes. I just remember it from yes. a song. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I right. delight to do thy will, O Lord. O Lord. Yes. And to walk with thee is not grievous unto me. I delight to do your will. Yes. That's a chorus from the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but that's what you're talking about. Well, the, the Lord, the, us willing, the us day, delighting to do so his the, will. Our part in that is that we have to be willing to be willing. Um, only God can create those, that yeah. godly desire mm. in us to do his will. Mm. But we have to l let go of our idols. We, we have to let go of our control. And, and this is the fear of the Lord. I'm relating this to yeah. fear, you see. Fear is that attitude of submission to the Lord. We're so in awe of the Lord that we realize you know, he's wonderful, and, and so we want to submit our heart to him. Mm. And, and so to do that, we have to let go of our idols and say, Lord, you're my all in all. You're, you're my author, the mm. authority. Mm. And that submissive heart, mm. that fear of the Lord, is through that, God can now work his desire. Mm. So, you know, people often ask me, you know, oh, how does guidance work? And mm. I would say, You've got to get before God and you've got to say, your will be done. Lord, I, I let go of my preconceived ideas. I That's surrender good. my heart to you. And then I trust you that you, you will form the desires in my heart. Mm -hmm. and, and what I, you know, what is not your will, let it fade out. And let what is your will mm -hmm. get stronger in me. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and so I believe that's, that's how God forms the desire in our heart yeah. as we submit to him. Yeah. So the, the willing and the obedient will eat the good of the land. Yeah. So having a willing heart is where it starts. Yeah. And then just to cap this off, yeah. the trembling, I believe, relates to the doing. Because having God giving us the desire to do his will, whatever it might be, um, we still need God's power to execute it. You know, and he, the Holy Spirit. And so the trembling is, as it were, aware of yeah. His power, aware yeah. of His. Because you can kind of get an inkling or, yeah. of God's will, yeah. and you can charge your head in your yeah. own flesh, yeah. as it were, yeah. and and mess it up, and say, yeah. God, why did that go wrong? Yeah, <laughs> I, exactly. I thought you called me to yeah. do this, and but actually, you you actually that trembling is, mm. you know, let's say you pr you prepare, you're going to speak at a big conference, or you're a musician, you're going to do a great. 
mm. concert and uh, you've done all your preparation but you're still yeah, trembling right because yeah, that's good. You're, you've I got like that. you know like you've that. got to execute yeah. this yeah. thing and to execute it in a way the trembling and by the way what what you're saying is coming back to our first verse that it, it's having this attitude this heart attitude yes the, you know it's not just thy will be done you yeah. know it's a sort of repetitive mantra it's something that's really that's right and this, and this trembling really is as a consequence of god in you it's it, it's not a trembling of doubt and yeah. insecurity it's an awareness of his an power awareness that's yeah, right within you i yeah. can see that yeah, i absolutely. mean before i preach you know i will obviously do my preparation the best i can mm. but still there needs to be a consciousness in mm. me lord if you're not with me in this, it, it's going to be a, as dead as a dodo. You know, I need your power. Right. I need, you know, I can't do this thing yeah. on my own. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Know, however well prepared I am, yeah. Lord, anoint me. And that's trembling mm. is that sense of dependency mm. Mm. on God. That's right. so, so in your versions, when I say your versions, the, you yes. know, the version that the Bi that Bible study you have printed on your screens all the time, it says to act um, according to his good pleasure. And in my, in my version, you know, one of the versions, it says, um, according to his good purpose. There's the, the, the two have a, they, they're sort of almost two sides of the same coin. Yeah. I think His pleasure, are. his purpose. Yeah. And, um, and without it, without purpose, or without God's pleasure, it's um, a pretty meaningless yeah. exercise. Or in fact, everything we're doing completely here is meaningless, just completely yes. without um, yes. Our purpose anything. is to glorify God. Yeah, that's right. And, and so as we let God yeah. flow through us like this, we're, we're, it's, Westminster it's for Confession. God's glory. That's right. Yes, yeah. the first to Glorify God. God. And to, yeah. yeah. And, and we're in the process, we enjoy Him. We enjoy His presence, yeah, that's His love, it. joy, and peace. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's, we are meant to be to image God. Yeah. We're not to, to be our own source. God's the source. And we're That's learning. what I get from this, actually, because you can read this verse, uh, 13, two ways. One is God doing it, and the other is our, us doing it. So, as yes. you say, we're reflecting. It holds the two together. We're made in his image. Yes. You know, we are yeah, working out the salvation that he's put within us. Yes. And, and this goes back to the idea of temples, because, yeah. you know, God made man to be a temple. Mm. Of, yes. of the Holy Spirit, of his presence. Mm. You know, that's one of the biggest themes in, in the Bible. And, I and agree. Uh, we were made is. to be the temple, and yeah. temples are in three parts, spirit, soul, body. Yeah. The holy of holies is the spirit. The holy place is the, yeah. the soul. Yeah. The outer court is the body. Yeah. And because of the fall, the glory of God had departed man. But through Christ, he was the first real temple yeah. of God, as it yeah. were, because he had the Holy Spirit within him, and he was radiating the presence of God. Mm. Uh, but through his death and resurrection, he multiplied himself in us yeah. so that he made it possible through his blood. For us to be each uh, a holy temple. Exactly. Yeah, uh, ourselves. It I is a powerful. I've just had a thought. Mm. Before we unpack that, yeah, I just like please. it because you. Yeah, please, you, you said Any time you want to interrupt, John, I've said <laughs> you can interrupt. <laughs> well, we'll be into we've been you're talking about working out you're your salvation. You're an officer and a gentleman. Thank you very don't much. Don't interrupt enough. We've been talking <laughs> about working out your salvation and what that might mean. Um, and the answer is. To look at Christ, well, because it's some of you said just picked yeah. before. Look at Christ; mm. He was the prime example of working out yes. the presence of God on earth. Yeah. Look how He behaved, what He did. He was bold. He was forthright. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we'll make mistakes. He didn't, mm. but He is the prime example mm. of walking the life of God on earth. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Sorry, but just some of you said triggered that. I, I, also, I, I, um, I, I have said this before, but it, you know, when you go to the um, the, the shrine of the book, which is outside the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, it there contains all of the Dead Sea Scrolls. I assume the new ones that they've discovered will go there as well, from Nahum and Zechariah. Yeah. But um, it also has the writings of the Essenes. And within those writings, and I, I absolutely love, I'm, I'm no scholar, but when someone gives me the English translation underneath the Hebrew, there it is, where they, where they s said, and it was a, a major part of their uh, belief. Obviously, it was pre-Christian, mm. but possibly John the Baptist was, you know, from that area, yeah. and you know, so it, it, it you know, um, but they have within their writings 
that our bodies are temples, or should be temples of the Holy yeah. Spirit. That's a powerful because this thing is, that's yeah. there. That this is a concept that goes right back to the beginning, you know, yes, the, the that's concept the point. of temple. That's why yeah. you see it. And we were going to talk about the Garden of Eden. All so the we ancient, yeah, you see yeah. it in all the ancient cultures. Yeah. Uh, even fallen mankind, you know, uh, has this idea of temples. Mm. Yes. And, um, Yes, the Garden of Eden is an illustration. God, the physical temples are really a template. Of course, they're based on the heavenly temple. That's another mm. story. Yeah. But they are a template, really, for the ultimate temple, mm. which is redeemed man in Christ. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we are the temple, not individually and all together. Yeah. We, we form a, a massive it's, temple. It's We're the body of Christ, yeah. Yeah. you know, f designed to, to, to be the glory. Now the dwelling is with, of God is with man. Yeah. And he will dwell with them, and they yes. will dwell with him. And, and I remember coming across, and in theological circles, this is a growing idea, and I think it's becoming accepted. And, and at first thought, it sounds like a crazy statement, mm. you know, that the Garden of Eden was the first earthly temple. Mm. But the more you look into it, the more you Just see. Just stepping back before you, yeah, so yeah. we will look into it, but basically a temple is a place where God dwells. Exactly, that's the key thing about so a temple. So let's, let's it's unpack a, it. It's a sacred space, it's a sanctuary, it's holy. The hev heaven, in a sense, the heavenly temple is the New Jerusalem. It's yeah. where God dwells, exactly. where his presence you know, exactly. is, is much stronger. Exactly. Um, God isn't limited to the temple, but his presence is there in a mm. special way. It's sacred space. And we are designed to be sacred space, mm. the holy place. Yeah. And um, th it's clear that the Garden of Eden was such a yeah. thing. Mm. Because, for instance, when Cain was cast out of Eden, it says he, was, he departed from the presence of God. Yeah. Even after the fall, there was a residual sacred that's, that's, space that's there. Right. Now, and I believe Eden, by the way, is the land of Israel, mm. you know, yeah. since the flood. It always throws in these new yeah. little nuggets, yes. which we'll, we'll all go back and That's ponder. why it's called the Holy Land, but that's we'll, another we'll, story, we'll. you know. <laughs> but uh, I did some research on this, and it's so fascinating because if you think about it, it talks about there's a river that flowed from Eden into the Garden of Eden. Mm. So the Garden of Eden is not the whole of Eden, all right? And there, there, is, there were three areas in Eden. Now, the river flowed from Eden, all right, into the garden, and then it divided in the garden into four rivers. That's right. And these four rivers then flowed out to the rest of the earth. That's right. Probably it was one massive continent yep. at that time. So, and, and so you've got, where did this river come from? There must have been a Mount Eden. And you'll see often temples are associated with point. mountains because yeah. mount, the height of a mountain symbolically represents holiness. Yeah. Mount Zion, yeah. you see. Um, and so you've got this mountain and f it, there must have been this powerful, powerful fountain under yeah. the earth. Spring fountain. And, yeah. and I imagine this, this, this huge amount of water gushing out of the top of this mountain, yeah. flowing down into the garden, yeah. dividing into four, and there's an interesting... Mm significance about that. And then it goes out into the rest of the land of Eden. Now there was an outer court. So what you've got is the, the source of the river is like the Holy of Holies. Uh, yeah, we understand the garden, that. which is like a plateau on the mountainside, yeah. is the holy place. Yeah. And that's where Adam and Eve lived. That's where the trees are. And then when Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, Mm. They were still in Eden, if yeah. you read it carefully. Yeah. Yeah. They were still in Eden, but they were in the outer court. Yeah. And there was an altar there in the outer court, yeah. you see. That's right. That is uh, true. Right? That is true. And then Cain got cast out of Eden when he sinned, yeah. out of the presence completely, of God. Completely, so yeah. Eden I mean, was on three levels, that's right. but the whole of Eden was on higher ground than the rest of the earth yeah. because that the, those four rivers flowed out That's right. to the rest of the earth. That's so right. you've got this temple pattern, That's right. and you've got this idea that out of the Holy of Holies flows the river of life. Mm. Then the Garden of Eden is like our soul. Mm. It's like a garden. Yeah. And if we let the river flow into our garden, wonderful. then we will grow wonderful yeah. Good fruit and yeah. so forth. And, and then, this is getting back to <laughs> working out salvation. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, yes. So and it um, is relevant, folks. It's completely relevant. You know, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I'm almost there. Yeah. The, um, and the interesting thing is that the tree 
of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil were in the holy place. Yeah. In fact, I believe the tree of life corresponds to the menorah. That's right. And, but Adam and Eve had a choice and it was, that was really their will. These trees represent our will. Mm -hmm. Do we choose to live by the tree of life mm -hmm. and submit our hearts? Yeah. Then, as it were, when we do that and we trust in Christ, that allows the inflow from above. Yeah. It allows the inflow of that river. But there's a second, uh, but Adam and Eve, of course, chose knowledge of good yeah. and evil yeah. to go their own way, to be independent. Yeah. That turned off. The, the, the flow, the, the, you yeah. might say. And then and, the, and event ultimately the consequence was cutting them off from the tree of life. And then we've had the whole process of the history of humanity yeah. where it's brought back in and the tree of life is there in the, uh, in the revelation yeah. of, of the, the heavenly city. Fascinating. Absolutely. So it fascinating. is fascinating. Sadly, it's Bible study is too short. Sorry, uh, yes. No, no, it's one, not. There's one, no need for apology. No, no. But it, and the apology is from us that we don't have enough time mm. in this modern world, and we should have more time to go, you know, to really ponder these wonderful truths. But yes. we do have eternity, but let's do <laughs> our best yeah, I, I while agree. we're here. But it, but it links directly with this work out your salvation. Yes. I mean, it, it, because what is the proverb that says, in all that you do, get understanding? Mm. I, yes. I, I can't quote it from memory. Well, you've like said it. it. It's good. But, but yeah, that's yeah, essentially yeah. what it's saying. All you get understanding, and this is part of getting the understanding. So, yeah. you know, these revelations and explanations are absolutely yeah. necessary, yeah. essential. They, they, they increase your awe. They do mine. Yeah. And, 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 you know, aid your, your mm. working out your salvation. It really, it's gaining understanding. That's what it is. Understand that's your it. salvation yeah. and let that understanding yeah. impact your life. Because in understanding there is wisdom and mm. wisdom will cause you to do the right thing. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and the pattern, as you said, is right through scripture. Yes. So, or, or we are, we've sort of leapfrogged the tabernacle in yes. the wilderness. We've leapfrogged, you know, temple in Jerusalem and we're, we're on to the, our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there it is. And then in Paul's writing, the house of God is, is the temple, the city of God is, yes. is like a temple. And you'll see elements in the Garden of Eden in the future temples. The, yeah. the decoration of trees. That's right. It's amazing nature. how many it's parallels like garden, there are. The, yes. the presence of cherubim. Yeah. It's, they all resonate yeah. with that. Yeah. But As I often say, you can't make it up. No, you can't. <laughs> this is just too absolutely profound. It's, it's a, a wonderful picture. It's encouraging because what it tells us is that the, the river of God is there. We don't have to crank it up. It's God's river of life yeah. is, is available to us constantly yeah. to empower us to will and to do, you know. According to his and, pleasure. And water always flows downhill. Mm, that's right. So what it needs to receive the river into our soul is a humble heart, a submitted mm. heart. Mm. That's a good Fear. one. So yeah. that you're, again, you, you've humbled yourself. Yes. So you're lower, so yes. the water flows down. I like but, that. And the last thing is that like the water that. also has to flow out. Yes, okay. That, that, those, that river that flowed in had to flow out. Yeah, yeah. If there's no outflow, it blocks the inflow. That's right. So that exactly. it flowed out as four rivers. And these are the different kinds of anointings or God empowering us to do his will. Mm -hmm. So when, the rev, when God moves on us to do something, and we obey him, that releases the river to flow out. Great. So verse 14 because we could talk yeah, the whole, yeah. we, in fact, you could do a whole <laughs> series, I think, on this, this uh, topic. But verse 14, you know, bringing us back down to earth. Um, do everything without, I, mine says complaining or arguing. Yes, um, it, my, uh, mine says complaining and disputing. But yeah. I mean, we, I think we all agree that if you go back to the Greek, a far better translation is murmurings. Yeah, yeah. Murmurings. murmurings. And I think... Um, uh, yeah, Derek was looking. We, look we saw him looking the, the, in his sort of, in yes, this sort of the, Greek lexicon. The sound lexicon. of doves cooing. The sound and, of doves cooing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Which, and I think it's Gorgas, Gorgas moin. So it's yes. an <laughs> onomatopoeic word, right. and just say it again. Gorgas. Gorgas moin. Yeah. Orgas moin. Something Can you say like that, that, John? It's, it's a Greek word. Orgas yeah. moin. That's right. Uh, but I think this is very interesting. It's another couplet. Yeah. And and, and uh, it, it's talking about you know the divine on the one hand and human nature, uh, humans on the other, and the murmurings is murmuring against God. Um, mm. uh, listen, it doesn't really matter what you're doing on the outset, but if if in your heart you're murmuring against God, you're complaining about your lot. Mm. You're complaining about 
whatever it is. And, you don't have the mind of Christ. You, you no, don't have the attitude that's right. of Christ. You're, 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 you're looking for blessings, um, but you're behaving appallingly according to the word. Yeah. This murmuring against God is very dangerous because we see in the Old Testament, you know, how they murmured, the Israelites murmured, and they paid a price for it. They, they, the serpents were sent, do you remember the serpents yes. were sent with their murmuring and, and, and a number died and the Lord gave them an out, he gave them the, 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 the pole with the serpent upon it, which is, of course, a type of Christ on the cross. Mm. Um, he always gives an out, turn to me. Um, but it, if you murmur, you're inviting demonic invasion in your life, yeah. and there's no doubt about it. Mm. Um, and he's saying, don't do that. Yeah. And another consequence, if, you're, if you're, your heart is murmuring, you will be in dispute with your neighbor. Mm. It'll cause you to be irritable and yeah. confrontational. And Paul is saying, don't do that. Note he puts the murmuring first, because the murmuring causes the disputes. Yeah. There's, a, there's a very profound um, um, statue or, or, or memorial uh, on Mount Nebo. And uh, you know, I, I, often we, we travel around Israel and, and you see these, you know, obviously a church has been built on the site of this event or that event from the scriptures. But where um, Moses looked over the promised land, but he didn't go in, mm. um, it, has, it has a cross, a cross, not just a pole, mm. a cross with a serpent yeah. around it. Yeah. And it, it's symbolic if we're fitting it into this passage of the serpent that's within us, the murmuring mm. yep. that's within yes. us yes. that needs to be crucified, yes. you know, the flesh that needs to be put on yes. the cross. You know, Mo Mo even Moses himself, you know, struck the rock when God said, speak to mm. it. So he did something in the flesh. Yeah. And uh, therefore, you know, this, this murmuring came from the snake within and yes. it needs to be recognized and it needs to yes. be put to death. That, that's a kind of little, Absolutely. and so I find this, you know, obviously it's very um, religious Catholic church up there, but they've got it. They got it. With yeah. this serpent on the cross. Yes. And it, it makes remedy. me think of, yeah, carry on. No, Go sorry. On. Yeah. God's, God's remedy was to put a bronze serpent on it. Yes. And the bronze is a metal that represents judgment. Yes. yes. So the picture is that Christ took our sin, yep. our, even our sin nature, yep. on the cross and judged it. Yep. It was judged on the cross. So those who saw their sin nature judged yep. and believe in that yep. could receive yep. life. And, and the Lord, the Lord um, Jesus said, you know, af after the great revelation of Peter, you know, uh, that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Uh, G Jesus said, well, in Matthew 16, you know, you know, I've got to go to the cross. And, Never, Lord, you can't go to the cross. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Yes. yes. Um, in other words, the serpent is lurking. Yeah. Didn't want the Lord to go to the cross. We wouldn't have had this passage in Philippians 2. It doesn't want us to go to the cross. Doesn't want us to actually put no. the serpent to death on the cross. Um, and it's pretty severe words from, you know, the previous few verses when he said, blessed are you, Peter, <laughs> and get thee behind me, Satan. So beware, beware. And it's the sin nature is still in our flesh, but it's been judged. Yeah. You know, Romans 8, 3 says, Christ judged sin. When you see sin in the singular, it represents the sin nature rather yeah. than sins is our personal sins when we yield to the sin nature. Mm. But it's been judged, mm. just like Satan's been judged. So even though it's present, it has no authority over us. We don't, yeah. that's why he says yeah. you don't have to yield to that murmurings yeah. that come from the sin nature because it has no authority over you. Mm. you, you it, as we walk in the spirit, that thing, it yeah. cannot touch us. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, as, as you said, John, you know, the complaining is inward, something wrong in your heart. Yes. Mm. You're not having the mind of Christ. And then the outworking of that is disputing, arguing. That's right. Publicly, you know, yes, yes, and causing, know, causing division, mayhem, causing divisions in the church. Mm. Uh, you know, churches, nearly all churches, suffer from these factions, and it's yeah. all it, the, the, its root is in their murmurings. Its root is in their hearts. Mm. It's good. the opposite of fear and trembling. You see those yes. two, the inner yes. and the outward. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's a double couplet. It is. <laughs> you know, we've got this couplet. couplet here, we've got that couplet there, but actually there's a, a couplet of couplets <laughs> because one is saying about God working in us uh, to do, 
Yeah. Um, and then the other is, is as it were, Satan working in us to, to do. do. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So God's not just interested in your outer life. He's interested in yeah. the inside. Yeah, very good. And there's another couplet in the next verse as well. Yeah, absolutely. You've, got, you've stolen my line. We've got, oh, we, no, no, only that we must, let's move on to verse 13. Should we just read it 15. again? Sorry, 15, my eyesight. Yeah. 15, so that you may become blameless and pure. And the, there it's, um, mm. the, the pure word there mm. you know, is like innocent. Um, Innocent as doves, it's the same mm. word. And uh, it's really pure, pure or unalloyed. So the word would be used for a pure metal mm. that isn't got things mixed in with it. Yeah. Or undiluted uh, wine, uncompromised. So yeah. it's talking about the heart motive mm. is pure, mm. not mixed in with other motives. So mm. that's talking about having uh, that pure heart yeah. before God. Yeah. And blameless is an interesting word, isn't it? Because you know, in one sense, there's a lot of, we live in a culture of blaming. You know, bla so-and-so blames them, it's not me, it's him, you know, and, and accusation. Yes. And the media is always wanting someone to blame for what's going on. But it, it's actually saying here, it's talking about blameless the before word. God, I suppose, is the primary sense. Yes, because in one sense we are blameless before yeah. God because of the blood of Christ. Yeah. But this is, again, talking about it. Remember, this is all about working out your salvation. Yeah. So there's a big overlap, in, yeah. in a sense, between these words. And it's how we, how we will appear to the world. That's what I was going yes. to think. Avoid yeah. all appearance of evil. Yeah. It right. just came to me that you know, that's where the blame is, if there's even an appearance of evil. The blame is definitely, one's inward, one's outward. So the blameless is, is your, yeah. certainly your, our works, our, yeah. our appearance, mm. Mm. definitely. In other words, that we would not be a cause of um, discrediting yeah. God or the gospel, mm. that, that something in our life. Clean hands and a pure know, heart. Yeah. Exactly. You know, hands yeah. is what you do. Exactly. May it be blameless. Yeah. And this yeah. is a, a, another reason why we need fellowship, because if we're alone, and this has been a very good, difficult time these last 18 months or yeah. so, um, we, we're vulnerable. Mm. Uh, it, you know, the, the Christian walk is mm. iron sharpening iron. We need each other to keep right. each other in yeah. this safe space of being blameless and yeah. innocent. Um, because otherwise, we, we, you know, the, the devil is a big enemy and you have to be very strong to, yeah. to, to not be yeah. deceived by him. Yeah, very good. We and then it links it to being children of God without fault. Yes. And, but, ah, in, in, in a, crooked a crooked and perverse and generation. Yeah. Exactly. There's another couplet there. Yes. Crooked and perverse. I know. And I, I think that it's interesting that literally it says... Again, it's a couplet of couplets. So you've got the crooked. blameless and pure, and you've got yeah. the crooked and yeah. depraved. Yeah, but uh, checking in the tenses of this, yes, it's like crooked mm. having been made perverse. So yeah. the perverse, I think, is actually the, what happens in people's hearts. Mm. It's that inner corruption, yeah. Yeah. the delighting in evil. Mm -hmm. And that expresses itself in a, in a crooked lifestyle. So yeah. again, you've got the inward and the outward. Yeah, very good. And that, that's the characteristic of the world that's under the power of the sin nature. It's so profound, isn't it? My, mine says depraved, but perverse is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Depraved is depravity. Is exactly what Powerful it is. word. Powerful word, depravity. Yeah. It's, it's a tragic word, really. Depravity of man. In know. other words, we shouldn't be like the world. Yes. As if we're imitating the world. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't th imagine a greater contrast than stars against the blackness of the night. Absolutely. It's like a total opposite, isn't it? Absolutely. And he says, you shouldn't be like this mm. dark world. Yeah. You, you should stand out completely yeah. uh, like, like stars stand mm. out against the, the black mm. background. Now, who, who should we stand, that's interesting, who should we stand out to? You know, sort of like, do we stand out to the world? Do they notice us? Do they care? Or is it, as God looks upon the world, he wants to see his children shining as lights? Both. Yeah. Yeah. Probably both. Yeah. 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 But particularly, God wants to see his children shining but at Unmistakable. Light. He doesn't want to see them, uh, the light being dimmed yeah. or hidden under a bushel. Exactly. He wants to look and see, exactly. there they are, there they exactly. are, count them all. Because if you, if you are not blameless and pure, you won't be seen. Yes. Mm -hmm. You'll be in with the mix of yes. all, all of the other stuff. Not a good place to there. be. 
you know, of not, you, as it were, the Lord Jesus says, you know, you're like salt. Yeah. It's lost its, its savour. And shining the light particularly is talking about our witness. Yes. As we share the word of God with one another. Yeah. Because, um, but if we, if we are compromised, yeah. people won't really listen. Yeah. Um, but that's what Jesus was saying in Matthew 5. He was saying, you know, let your light so shine before men. That's your witness mm -hmm. with your lips. Mm -hmm. So that they will then look at your good works yeah. and glorify your Father in heaven. I, in a way, when you witness, then they will actually check out <laughs> yeah. if, if, if your life backs that yeah. up. Yeah. And if it does, it doesn't mean you have to be perfect, but if, if there is credibility to you that yeah. you are endeavoring to live what you preach, then they, they, their hearts will be turned and they will glorify So the God. interesting thing is this is the first verse in chapter 2 where it goes from us getting our act together, as it were, uh, to what's the, the outworking of it, which is to, be, to shine. Yes. So all of these previous verses it's is to get to the point that we will, yes, let our light shine, shine before men. Because that you pay a price. That's it. In other words, it's part of this theme of the mind of Christ. Others are more important than you. And yeah. God's more important than you. Yeah. So in other words, it's a sacrifice to yeah. put yourself on the line and, and to witness, mm. right? Mm. And so you are putting others before your, your comfort. Mm. You, you are shining the light. Mm. Because if they don't hear the gospel, they'll be lost. Yeah. So you're putting their needs first and also Christ's need. He paid for them to be saved. So, But definitely the emphasis, so wheeling right back to what you said right at the beginning, John, is as it were, God doing a work in us, yes. um, you know, the salvation in us, uh, rather than us just trying to um, be witnesses, you know what I mean? Trying yeah, to put something I, together, cobble it together so that we can yes. be, you know, so that our campaign can be successful. A absolutely right. It's, and God doing a work in, in us, us for eternity. And, we, and we, we need to listen to that work. I think, he, is it, was it Bach who, who mm. because he was a church organist yeah. and choir master, yeah. that he used to write his, his cantatas. I mean, yeah. they'd be probably on a Friday night, but he'd yeah. wait on the Lord yeah. to know which piece of scripture he wanted to put yeah. in music. Yeah. And that's what's so important. Mm. Are we running out of time? Yeah, we've got anxious? a couple more minutes. Okay, no, all right. Well, I, I, I think one example of how this fails, where p people do not let their light shine, but think they are, is so many parish church notice boards, uh, the outside yeah. ones, uh, around the country, where you see a notice, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, yeah. to which you might say, so what? Yes. It, it, it's yeah. not the gospel. Yeah. They miss out the next verses. Yeah. And that is just the devil at work, that yes. is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really is. something there. Absolutely. <laughs> well, let's just go, yeah, get to uh, verse, um, is it 16? Mm. Uh, just so that we can cap off our reading. Holding out the word That's of life. How you, yes, it's holding fast, or it could be translating holding forth, yes. as, like you're offering yeah. a free yeah. gift. Yeah. Yeah. And you are, this is the gospel. So how do you shine? It's yeah. by sharing the gospel, yeah. but it's by the power of the Spirit, because yeah. as you share the words, the Spirit yeah. will confirm the words. Yeah. He will shine out of you spiritually. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, the church notice boards, they do have limited space. You know, yes, I, they do. I, they I, I use like a good, there's a good one in Sussex, when I drive from Sussex to Kent, where it just says, stop. God at work, <laughs> you, you, know, it, it, you know, you've got to provoke people in this yeah, sort of yes. thoroughfare of life, interest. yeah, to yeah. get their interest. Keep going, keep going. We've and got then to... that I may, so he says, if you do this, you, you shine forth the gospel, mm. that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, and this is the judgment seat of Christ, I believe, mm. Mm. that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. He says, if, yeah. you, will, if you will shine your light, mm. if you will follow my teaching, mm. you know, I'll, I'll be delighted in you on that judgment day. In fact, you'll be part of my crown. You'll be part of my reward yeah. in that day. Yeah. yeah, exciting. So we've really converged on that. That is the yes. key point, isn't it? Yes. It's every, the whole of humanity is that yes, converging on, on this day of Christ. Day, which is quite, right. a, quite an awesome um, thought. Yes. And then, it, you know, of course he's saying that he wants to be able to boast on that day. That he, he's not laboured in vain. He's not laboured mm. for nothing. So we're in our final few seconds. I'll just say, what an absolutely awesome passage of Scripture. We, we thought we had covered it maybe last week, but here, here we've dug into what is the salvation 
Yeah. What does it mean to you deep within? How can you work it out? Uh, and remember, it's God who is working in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure and purpose. Mm. What a blessing. So don't, no, no complaining, no arguing. <laughs> Let's just shine our light for his glory. Thank you very much. See you next week.